Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Again, this is uh, another session where I will discuss uh, another question which will show you how to prepare the schedule or the disclosure notes showing the movement of the building, which is one asset, one PPE item. But this time, the PPE movement will be shown for two years, which is for the year ended. The first December 2020, and another one is for the year ended. The first December 2021, and you are going to show the uh, movement of PPE. So let's look at this question. It is rather short. So we have the information on first of January 2018. Be careful, your. Uh, Accounting period starts on 1st of January 2020 and you need to show for two years. So meaning that you need to show uh, two years uh, in terms of movement, something like this. So let me just show you. This is the one here. So you are going to have two columns. You just focus on this section here, the one that I highlight. Yeah, you need to have two columns. One is 2020, another one is 2021. And uh, for this, I want you to prepare the... Uh, Cost valuation section, accumulated depreciation section, and accumulated impairment loss. Because this question consists of impairment loss as well. So let's go and read the question first before we can do the question. So we have the information here regarding a um, company, uh, Kirana Quest, that acquired a commercial building. So that, that was acquired a commercial building back in January 2018, and that commercial building was 10.2. So that was the cost on the date of purchase. The cost on the date of purchase. So this is the initial cost. This is the cost. And the cost uh, on 1st of January will also be the same as at 1st of January 2020 because the cost remains the same. What changes is the, um, the uh, depreciation, then later the carrying amount will change. The be building estimated useful life was 25 years. So the useful life of the building was 25 years, starting from 1st January 2018. And then now it comes to the current period. This is the current period where you are informed the commercial building, the fair value of the commercial building, the building, on 1st of January 2020 is 13.8. 13.8. So that was the fair value. So the fair value. And then uh, that is in 2020. So nothing happened in 2020. There was just this fair value. Read the one at the bottom here. You are informed the company adopts the revaluation model to measure its PPE. So which means that the fair value on 1st of January 2020, you need to do some revaluation re model. Go and compare 13.8, the fair value with the carrying amount also on 1st of January 2020. So the carrying amount is not 10.2, it should be lower. You need to go and calculate what is the carrying value, carrying amount. And then you have another one which uh, tells you regarding what happened in 2021. So in 2021, there was a massive uh, landslide triggered by heavy rains that hit the commercial building that caused substantial uh, economic loss to the business. And this is one indicator that there is an uh, uh, impairment test that needs to be done by the company. So this is an indicator of impairment where that has hit the commercial building, which caused some uh, economic loss, maybe the drop in the sales or drop in the profit. So on that date, you are informed, the estimated, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> fair value, less cost to sell, was 9 million. So this information here is telling you regarding the, uh, information on recoverable amount and you are also informed the value in use the value in use i've used yellow value in use of the asset was 9.5 
So here there is an impairment in 2021, but there is a revaluation in 2020. So there are two things that happen. So we will be doing the one happened in 2020 first, then we'll be calculating what are the impairment loss in 2021, which is happening at the end of the year. But the fair value happens at the beginning of the previous year, 2020. The impairment test uh, was conducted on 31st of December, 2021. So let's look at this. So um, you prepare this. Uh, you can start by uh, putting uh, the balance. So you can see here the balance uh, given is the one in the question. But before that, we can just do the workings first. We do the workings. So I will start doing the workings for the year 2020. Year 2020, which is the one relating to revaluation. So you have here revaluation, revaluation. And this revaluation uh, that happened on 31st, uh, 1st of January 2020. Okay. That was the revaluation date. Revaluation. Right. Next. So what you need to find out is to find out the carrying amount. The fair value you are given in the question. So that was given just now, 13.8. So take the cost. Cost that you take here is cost at the date of acquisition. So at the date of acquisition, the cost is this one, the one here. This is the date. This is the cost. So um, that was the cost of the commercial building. So you include here. So you will now calculate the uh, accumulated depreciation from the date of acquisition until the date the, of the revaluation. So date of acquisition until the date of revaluation. So before that, uh, that was for how many years? For three years. So if, uh, let us just check how many years is that. So that was for two years because 2018 and 2019. So you take 10.2 million divided by the number of useful life, 25 years given in the question. And then you times two years. And therefore you will get 816. So if you take, uh, you go and subtract uh, 816 from 10.2, uh, you'll be able to get the carrying value to be 9384. So now it is 9384. You can compare with 13.8 and therefore you will get a, def, a surplus on revaluation. Re so that surplus on revaluation re is initial revaluation. Re so on initial revaluation, re the increase in the surplus will be credited to the asset revaluation re reserve and will be debited to the to the uh, uh, asset here building. So what you have to do is prepare this for 2020. So this figure, beginning balance will be the figure here, which is the one, it, the same as the one in 2018. And then the revaluation surplus is the figure here, the one that you calculated, right? 816 is the elimination of the accumulated depreciation that happened before the first revaluation. So 816, when you eliminate, you debit accumulated depreciation, you credit the building. And this is the total, where this total should come back to the fair value. Okay, let us look at the one for the section of accumulated depreciation. For accumulated depreciation, of course, at the beginning of the year, it is 816 because that was from 1st of January 2018 until 31st December 2019. So beginning of January 2020, this is column 2020. I hope you see that. This is that column 2020, right? You have 816. And this accumulated depreciation must be eliminated. Why? Because on that date, 1st January 2020, there is a revaluation. So revaluation you have to go and eliminate, so you eliminate. In that year, in that year, which is 2020, you will provide depreciation. So in that year, I'm, I'm saying that in the year ending 
31st of December 2020. So that depreciation for that year would be how much? 600,000. How do you get 600,000? So 600,000 is actually 13.8 divided by 23 years. 13.8 million divided by 23 years. 23 years is the remaining useful life. The 23 years is the remaining useful life where you take 25 minus 2. So at the end of the year, the asset uh, carrying amount is 600,000. So you can also check the working here. Check the working here where I also provide the calculation for accumulated depreciation for 2020. Then we go to the next section. So in the first year, there are no impairment loss. No impairment loss because impairment was conducted the following year. Not the following year, but uh, that was the year 2021. That was the following year. So 13.2. So this 13.2 is the carrying amount, meaning that the revalued amount minus the accumulated depreciation. Right, let's look at the second year. So the figure here, right, will now, will now be shown where, so you're going to take this and you're going to show here, beginning of the year so beginning of the year you will have this figure so let us see how much is the figure here so you must show the figure 13 point 13 point 13 point 8 sorry not the one here this is this one okay 13 point 8 yeah 13 point 8 is shown here because this is the figure the amount at revalue amount so in the second year there are no revaluation whatsoever there are no elimination of accumulated depreciation because Nothing happened at the uh, beginning, but uh, something happened later at the end of uh, the year where you can see in the question earlier, you can you are informed as at 31st of December 2021, there was a massive landslide triggered by the heavy rains. Okay, so what happened is that there is an impairment test that needs to be conducted. So let's look at that. So uh, for the accumulated depreciation, so you can see here it was 600, right? So you will take that and that 600,000 is the one that you will have to transfer here, okay? So during the year, the depreciation will be charged again and that is also 600,000. But this calculation here, for the second year, it would be not 13.8 divided by 32 but that would be uh, um, so if you calculate i have shown the working here let me just show you yeah it was 13.2 for the second year i took, i show the working here 13.2 million which is the carrying amount on that date divided by the remaining useful life now the remaining useful life has gone down gone down to 22 years before that it was 23 years right so you have 600,000 so this is the calculation here okay the one here so you notice or not here the calculation is different but you get the same amount here 13.8 divided by 23 years but here 13.8 divided by the remaining useful life becomes now 22 years. And that was the case there. And uh, now comes the calculation that you are looking for, which is the carrying amount. So you're trying to find the carrying amount on 31st of December 2021 because you have the information that the asset is being impacted. So you will compare the carrying amount on this date, 12.6, with the... Uh, recoverable amount class are you still with me yes no class. Yeah. i'm i'm now going to go on talking about impairment so you have 12.6 the carrying amount where you have already calculated the depreciation for that two years yeah two years so this is the accumulated depreciation so six hundred thousand at the beginning and six hundred thousand 
at the end of the year, so 1.2. So now we're trying to calculate the accumulated impairment loss. So you will compare that with the recoverable amount. So when you compare that, you will first compare, you are going to compare what? Compare higher between the fair value, less cost to sell, and the value in use. In the question, originally, just now, we have already witnessed that the value in use is 9.5. The recoverable amount um, is the value in use because the fair value less cost to sell is lower than the value in use. So this is going to be your recoverable amount. So this is your RA. Why? Because it was higher than the uh, where, uh, fair value less cost to sell. So you will put it here. Here you compare. Here I just compare. But I take this 9.5. So I put a different color here. Okay. 9.5. So if you compare, you can see that there is an impairment loss of 3.1. So this 3.1 is the one that you will debit to the impairment loss and you will credit to the accumulated impairment loss. I put there A, uh, I, L only, which is also meaning the same. I'm putting just a simple journal, accumulated impairment loss and the amount would be the one that you calculated here. So when you do that, that will also affect the schedule. So the schedule you can see that during the year, you have some charge for impairment loss of 3.1. At the beginning of the year, there were no charge because it was not conducted at the beginning of the year. It was conducted at the end of the year. So balance as at 31st of December was 3.1 for the impairment loss. So now your carrying amount on 31st of December 2020, uh, 2021 would be 9.5. 9.5 is A minus B minus C, which is cost, or the here is the cost, yeah. Um, accum less accumulated depreciation, less accumulated impairment loss. So A minus B minus C. Before this, it was just A minus B, cost minus accumulated depreciation. With the impairment loss, you need to also deduct the impairment loss. So this is the carrying amount in 2021. 9.5 and the carrying amount in 2022 uh, is not to be done here. So it was just for two years. So that was the carrying amount uh, for 2020 and 2021. So uh, here is the working and uh, this is the impact here. Okay, that's it for the preparation of uh, movement of PE for two different years, but it was on the same asset and the asset here is uh, the building which is your p p e your building okay that's it i'll uh, i hope and i'm thankful i'm thank you uh, so thank you for your attention okay